Good afternoon, my Lipsians. Welcome to a Turbo Tortoise tutorial. Ya boy has noticed that the gamer, while is very keen on using their computer, has absolutely no idea how to fix it. The majority of, of you are like this. So I have set about, you know, creating some tutorials, one of those being how to create bootable USB media for Windows 10 and 11. Both of them will follow basically the same process. And I'm going to show you the Windows way. And then for me, what really is the better way where you can save the ISO and then use ye olde Rufus because that is oh, just a chef's kiss piece of software. I don't know who makes it, but you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for doing that for us. So the first one, and like I say, my, my honestly, my least preferable is to use this and we still kind of need to use it for the other mode that i'm going to show you to create the iso so that you can then sort of burn it to the flash it's almost like you're writing a cd that's the way you should or a dvd is the way you should think about it we'll do windows 10 for now so we go to windows 10 and then we go to download now right and then this will give us the program that you see it'll say media creation tool with the version of windows that you're looking at okay so we start off with that now, when you run this application, it's going to take you through a couple of steps to do this. And I would say out of the methods, it's probably the easiest one to do. But like I say, it's for me, it's quite time consuming. It takes a really, really long time for, for it to do this sort of process. So we'll jump and skip between as necessary. All right, so you get the software license agreement is the first one. Then you go through to the next one. And then it's getting everything. Six and a half hours later. Finally, once Windows is done scanning your everything, then you can actually get the function that you want out of it. Man, Microsoft is so rubbish. This is why I just, I hate to doing this. You can, you, I would leave this ticked so that it's, for, especially if you are do, uh, running it from the device that, you know, you're going to be um, doing the fresh installation on, then I would leave that ticked. But generally, these are the, are, are the settings you want to see. You can change this to uh, a United Kingdom, but I wouldn't. Just leave it on the States because it might change your keyboard layout, which will be just very, very annoying. Then you can finally decide if you want to do it to a USB flash or to an ISO. So I would say doing it to the ISO is generally the better one because of the other method we'll have. Then you always have that ISO. You never have to go through this process again. But I'll show you onto the flash drive first. So we've got the flash drive list. So it sees little wickles over there. And then it's going to, once again, take its sweet time scanning absolutely everything on your system because selling your data. Now the progress bar has finally started and we have some time ticking away over here. This is the, it's the activity of it downloading the actual ISO first, which it, will, it should shoot to 50% over here pretty quickly. And then the next 50% is actually copying onto the flash drive. Three days later. And then finally, after an age of man has passed, probably about 15 minutes, then you have an accessible bootable drive. So if I click on that, it'll show me the files and I can say finish and it'll do, I don't even know what it does in the cleanup. But anyway, just Windows things. But there you go. Now you have a bootable flash drive. You'll see it will say ESD-USB or ESD-ISO over here when you are finished. But now it's ready. Now I can boot from this as a normal bootable drive. It would, you know, like an old bootable DVD as we would have back in the day. And so that basically concludes method one. Method two, you want to use, like I said, this program called Rufus. It is absolutely incredible. Um, little piece of software that creates bootable flash drives from pretty much any media. As long as that media has a boot sector in it, this can set it up that that drive then acts as a bootable drive. So it can be used for Linux. You can use it for older stuff like even Windows XP, um, uh, Windows 7 will work, Windows 8 will work, anything. Any Windows distribution or operating system that you could imagine that you want to make bootable, at least for PC, you can do it through Rufus. So we get the latest Rufus over here. Um, it's going to run as just an EXE. It's not an installation as far as I know. This should just be a standalone, um, which is the better version of the package because then you can just copy it onto a flash drive and use it anywhere without having to go through an installation process. The main thing for this is it uses existing ISOs. Okay, so an ISO is a, is a disk image, basically the long and the short of it. So if you don't have an ISO, then you need to come back to the media creation tool and go through the first bits over here okay and i suggest you do this just because it will allow you to um just deploy at any point in time with rufus so that you don't have to go through that process and rufus is incredibly fast i mean like three minutes on this fast flash that i've got over here so 
like I say, we go through the same beginning phases of this, but instead of going to USB, we now select ISO and we're going to save the disk image to our hard drive. Okay, so like I said, you get to this phase, you've got the create installation media over here, and then you just leave these default as you did before, and then instead select ISO file. So now it's, you see it's, it's expecting you to go to a DVD like it's 2008, but you know, we've moved on. We have flash drives now, which is great. So it's going to default to Windows. What I suggest you do is just call it um, the version of Windows and then the current patch or the current update that it's on being 22H2, just so you know. If it is very far behind, then oof, I need to create a new piece of installation media. So I'm just going to default it over here into my C drive for now. And then it's going to download and save that ISO. Many months later. And now we finally have an ISO. Now if I click over here, it'll take me to the root so I can see, oh, there's my file over there that I want to write. Now, this is where things get pretty damn easy, honestly. You click over here, you select the flash drive. If you only have one connected, it only detects and will give you flash drives on this. It knows what is a hard drive and what is an SSD, etc. Because it's smart, okay? Then you're gonna have these three options. It should be on disk or ISO by default. You click select. Then you browse for that file that we've just saved. And it'll show up over there. And double click on that sucker, and I'm ready to go. That's literally all you have to do. And now you click start. And you can customize, I mean, if you want to, this is actually new. They, they generally don't, uh, um, oh wow, you can even do your regional options and stuff the same as your current user. That's really cool. They actually didn't have this in before. So that's kind of cool. I would I would actually tick that um, and then maybe your username or something, but it, it's not really necessary. You'll get a warning that everything on there is gonna be wiped because it wipes it to create a fresh copy and you click okay. And then this, I'm not kidding. This, this process, you can see it's already copying the files. It's already copying the stuff on, onto the flash drive. It takes seconds. This is like probably like three to five minutes. Let's, I'm actually going to time it right now. I'm busy looking at the recording and I'm going to give you the exact amount of time that this takes. 12 seconds later. And there we go. In three minutes and 41 seconds, it managed to do what Windows couldn't with like 20 minutes. I love you, Rufus. Thank you so much for existing. This is by far the quickest and most effective way to deploy. Get your ISO. If you have a copy already, just use Rufus to deploy. And now you're ready to install your Windows. If I go into the flash drive, you'll see it's basically exactly the same. Uh, it just has a different name. It's ESD.ISO. Exactly the same thing. Now you can boot from this. You can reinstall your Windows and preferably use the reset function because damn, that thing is really solidly good. If you have serious issues with your machine and it's misbehaving, then go into the Windows recovery and use the reset function, but keep your files. It will wipe out all of your programs. You'll have to re-download your, you know, your Steam if it's in a default location. You, anything you've stored in a default location or any program you've installed to a default location will be wiped from the system. But all of your files, like your documents and pictures and all the rest of it will be exactly where you left them. And then it's like a full fresh reinstall of all your drivers and the full registry clean out and all of the rest of it. And the machine will run absolutely perfectly after that. So I really highly suggest you work it around like that and do it about once a year. When you get it like a half day in December, that's all it takes for you to do uh, to reset up and don't be lazy. Look after your stuff and it will look after you. Until next time, this has been a Turbo Tortoise Tech Tutorial.